Hey guys, how's it going? So I figured I'd make a more in-depth video on how to make uh, milk kefir because uh, I have a way better idea of what I'm doing now. Uh, I've been making this for, I don't know, two to three months or something like that. Uh, and I drink this stuff at least every other day when a batch is ready. So it's taken me a little bit to kind of fine tune my craft here. And uh, I actually um, learned a lot by reading this instructional piece of paper that came with my kefir grains. Believe it or not, this little pamphlet here is extremely informational and it helped um, fill in some gaps of some things that I was missing on brewing kefir. So this is just going to be a quick little overview on how to make milk kefir, which is basically fermented milk. So the first step is what I did is I ordered my kefir grains off of Amazon. Uh, I used uh, I used some grains that had a really good uh, review status, like you know, well over a thousand people had reviewed it and said they were great. So I went ahead and just ordered those grains, and uh, they come in like a little container um, shipped to you. And then you take those grains and you uh, stick them in a jar, and then you want to fill it up with milk. The ratio is one tablespoon of grain per one cup of milk. I've been doing a little bit more than that accidentally. And uh, what happens is if you use a little bit too much grain per milk, you'll get a little more separation of the uh, curds and whey there than you would if you were using a lesser amount of grains per milk. So this right here is about six tablespoons of grains and four cups of milk. So I'm using a little bit too much grains here, which is why I got a lot of separation there, but that's fine, it's okay. It's not like it went bad or anything. Um, it just means that my kefir is done basically. Once it separates like that, your batch is done brewing. So, so uh, this is a batch that's been done. It's exactly 36 hours and it is ready to strain out. So I'm gonna do that in just a second here, but I just wanna go over some quick little things on making kefir. So uh, the first thing you wanna get is a fine mesh strainer. Uh, plastic or nylon works best. I wouldn't use metal on this stuff just because it might change the flavor or change the fermentation somehow. Use a, a glass mason jar with a plastic lid. You don't want to use a metal lid for fermenting any kind of foods because it could uh, interact with it. Um, these guys recommend using regular pasteurized whole milk to do your first batch and then switching over to raw milk after that. I didn't follow their recommendations. I just used raw milk and my kefir came out fine. And uh, here's something that I just added actually yesterday. These guys suggest using a seedling mat uh, in the winter time because apparently it ferments a hell of a lot better around 75 degrees and I had no idea <clears throat> that this was the case but it makes perfect sense because my kefir hasn't been brewing as quick this winter and because like my kitchen is really cold and uh, it brewed so much quicker in the summertime so temperature is a big factor on brewing kefir and this uh, seedling mat has done a great job man I haven't seen my kefir brew like this in a long time so this stuff is probably gonna be really good so uh, yeah anyways um, those are kind of your basic things that you need there um, and yeah so basically you get your grains one tablespoon of grain for one cup of milk throw it in your jar Set a timer or set an alarm on your phone for 36 hours, and then you're gonna change it. And I'll show you how I change it out right here. Okay, so uh, someone did recommend using a plastic colander, and that seemed to be working okay for a while, but I think there was some kefir slipping through. So I went ahead and ordered a fine nylon mesh strainer. Uh, but for now, for this batch, I'm going to have to strain it through this metal uh, strainer, which it's not going to ruin it or anything, but uh, I just think nylon and plastic is probably a better idea for this fermenting stuff. So that's why I'm using a metal strainer now. So as you can see, this is like pretty chunky on the top. You can see the way on the bottom. I'm just going to pour it all in here so you can see how it all comes out. This is uh, 
This stuff is really good, man. I don't know how to describe this stuff other than it's one of my favorite drinks that I've ever had. And uh, I crave this stuff constantly. That's why I'm constantly making bigger and bigger brews of this stuff. So I'm just basically getting closer to the point to where I'm just going to be fermenting all of my milk and not drinking any of it normally. Because I prefer kefir 10 times over regular milk. It's uh, better tasting. It's more satiating. Feels more nutritious. Just everything about it, man. It's so good. And uh, I found this really cool lady's channel that is uh, super into making kefir and, and uh, even kefir cheese, which is something that I'm going to make a video on sometime here soon. That's going to be fun. And then possibly even experimenting with uh, flavored kefir drinks. So, you know, I might even be messing around with that and also, also be doing um, some homemade flavored soda pop made out of kefir grape flavored kefir soda pop this stuff sounds so good so it's pretty exciting man you can actually eat some really delicious foods eating a uh, raw primal diet so this is uh yeah this is a uh, pretty chunky here May take a little bit longer than normal to strain this through compared to the colander, but it's going to do a lot better job, I think, of separating the kefir from the from the uh, whey. So I just kind of swish it around here and kind of strain it as much as I can. You can see it coming, still coming through there. You'll know when you're done because you'll basically just be scooping around a pile of grains and you'll see the difference here in a sec. See it's already turning into kefir grains here. So these are the, the grains here coming out. Yeah, I think I think these strainers do a way better job than the colander. I'm glad I watched a couple of videos last night on making kefir because, you know, it never hurts to kind of just go through and reteach yourself something that you think you already know. I can't tell you how many times I've done that on this diet. I go through and I just do a whole new search and just search again on, on all the videos and information on what I'm trying to look up and I'll find more information on it, believe it or not. I think I know everything about it and then I'll find more on it. So I can't encourage that enough to just constantly keep educating yourself on the different techniques on fermenting foods and just uh, eating raw foods and stuff like that. Cause it's just, it's endless. There's so many different varieties of raw foods and, and combinations of things that you can make, especially when you're talking about fermenting stuff it can get pretty interesting. So, all right, here we go. Here's your kefir grains. And what you'll notice is uh, sometimes the grains will multiply. So you'll have more grains than you had last time. Sometimes they don't multiply, sometimes they do. They're kind of interesting little things, how they work. But uh, the way it works is the kefir grains use the milk lactose as food. So the kefir grains digest the lactose and then the process of that, it makes a fermentation. Uh, it's very similar to how like alcohol is made with uh, fruits and grains. All right, so I'd say that's uh, very thoroughly strained out there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull uh, four tablespoons out because I think there's probably more than that in here But I'll do a quick measurement and then fill up this jar here We'll just do a rough guess One Two 
three, four. Yeah, see, I had a little bit too much in there exactly, exactly like I was told. So these are going to my dogs. Come here, Gaia. You want some kefir? Go ahead, eat it up. My dogs love it, obviously. All right, so, got four tablespoons of kefir grains in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some milk out of my fridge. Shake it up so the fat is evenly distributed. So I got four tablespoons in here, so I'm gonna fill up with four cups of milk, which is gonna fill it up right to the top. Perfect. All right, there's my new batch. My new batch goes on the counter. I'm going to set my alarm for 36 hours. Actually goes on the uh, seedling mat here. And uh, this is what I do with the uh, strained out kefir. And this is what most people do that are really into this stuff is they do a second fermentation. So that's what this process is here is, uh, man, this stuff looks really thick and good this time. I think this, this seedling mat is very crucial. I would definitely highly recommend this. Um, so anyways, here's my kefir that I just strained out. I want you to see kind of like how thick this stuff is. So it comes out like a, almost like a drinkable yogurt. Very interesting. So yeah, that's, that's a properly brewed kefir right there. My last couple batches were a lot thinner than this. So this is going in for a second fermentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a lid on this and I'm gonna let it sit for another 24 hours. And once this is done after 24 hours, it's ready to drink. So the entire process of brewing my kefir takes 36 hours on the, ferment, on the uh, seedling mat and then you ferment it another 24 hours after you strain it out. And this is the time where you can throw in like an orange peel or an orange slice in here if you want and make like orange kefir. It gets really interesting, man. But uh, I just drink it straight. You know, I'm a man. I'm pretty, pretty simple with my food. So, um, and I, I just, I really like it the way it is in its natural state. So no need to flavor it up, but I'll probably try it someday. So anyways, yeah, 24 hours, this will be ready to go. This is going on the counter to wait. And that's a pretty much all I have. Um, that's what I've learned so far in the last couple months of making kefir. Really recommend this stuff. I mean, nutritionally, this stuff is uh, some of the most healthy, healthy, healthiest food in the world that you can that you can possibly eat. I mean, it's got I've read like 30 to 60 different kinds of bacteria in kefir compared to yogurt it has like seven. So, I mean, that's such a huge difference right there. Um, but, uh, all right. That's my quick little video of kefir there. For anybody that's looking to start brewing your own, that's how you do it. Thanks for checking in, guys.